With the first rays of sunshine, nature explodes. Flowers and insects know their score by heart and immediately get to work. At the farm, this return of spring announces the big day for our 35 cows who are finally going to be let outside again. Everyone run for cover. It's time to unleash the beasts. at last from these long months of confinement in the stable, the cows enjoy the pleasures of their newfound freedom. Like children in a school playground, kicking and jumping helps loosen their muscles, but it's also a sign of contentment. Bovids instinctively seek contact with one another, so a little headbutt here and there enables them to reconnect, while the imperturbable gazelle looks on. Before climbing up to the high pastures, the cows take advantage of the valley grasslands to reacquaint themselves with the smells, the taste of grass, and anything else that they can get their tongue around. Cows are social, empathic mammals which can establish strong bonds of friendship from a very early age. So when they finally meet up again after the winter separation, they lick each other and smell each other for comfort and reassurance, or graze side by side as close friends might do. They reestablish bonds that are vital to their well-being and thus form a united herd once again in just a few short hours. This return to the outdoors is also a time for re-establishing the herd's hierarchy, dictated by the herd instinct and relations of domination. Those who feel themselves capable of being a leader have to mark their territory. At the ripe age of seven, Gazelle the Tarantez enters the contest. She wants to be the herd leader. Skirmishes break out all over the field. Other candidates try to win their place in the hierarchy. With cows, there's no set age for pitting themselves against one another. But as a general rule, it's the oldest and the biggest ones who lay down the law. brief clashes, it suffices for one of the combatants to turn its flank, indicating submission to put an end to the fight. And sometimes it's Mouchette, the trained herding dog, who intervenes to separate the fighters. Very soon, there are just two contenders left, Gazelle and her ultimate rival. After an intense combat, Gazelle wins. From now on, she's the leader, 
It's often the most experienced cow, the one who knows how to deal with danger, who becomes the leader of the herd. This morning at the Russi farm in Burgundy, Nugaro, our little male calf, wakes up alone. His mother has died from a sudden infection. His nose, still full of maternal pheromones, he looks for her. Without her and without milk, he's on borrowed time and his life's at risk. Guided by his survival instinct, he sets out in search of a life-saving udder as a calf can't last for more than a few hours without feeding. But in vain, the other cows don't allow themselves to be suckled by a calf they don't recognize. The situation becomes critical for the newborn, all the more so as every udder in the farm is already occupied by a calf. The next few hours will prove crucial. Alexander, the farmer, knows this and has to play the role of a wet nurse to supply him with the necessary eight daily liters of milk. A solution that can only be temporary. If Nougaro doesn't find a replacement maternal udder soon, he won't be able to survive. Has Aldo, the farm dog, sensed something? It seems so as he decides to keep watch over the young orphan. The next day, Alexander makes a last-ditch attempt. He wants to have Nougaro adopted by a cow that has just lost her calf. Alexander stimulates Nougaro's sucking reflex by having him suckle his fingers, then pushes him towards a cow and lets nature take its course. Fortunately for the young calf, cows also adopt babies in the same way as humans. Through her gestures, the cow shows that she accepts Nougaro. Through rubbing and the play of hormonal alchemy, they exchange their scents, thus creating a strong attachment bond 